Welcome back to Igniting Inspiration. I'm Allison Boutet, the principal at Heritage Middle School, and today I'm excited to share a lesson from uh, one of our sixth grade co-taught math classrooms. The two teachers sitting next to me are Jessica Pickett and Charlotte Funicello, and today they will be highlighting some of the visible learning influences that ha have a high effect size that we do study and talk about here at Heritage. So a few questions I have that I wanted to highlight from the lesson and get more information or have you share more information about is what data and information do you consider when organizing your instructional groups? So in this lesson specifically, we were using the uh, class breakdown report on MAP and we used the uh, algebraic operations, uh, operations and algebraic thinking. Uh, goal area to rank the students based on where their uh, RIT scores were in those areas. And then once we ranked them, we were able to break the students into uh, strategic groups. And then once we had our groups, we gave them uh, specific color bracelets. And then we were able to assign students partnerships using those colors. Uh, so students had some choice in who they were working with, but the partnerships in the groups were um, carefully chosen and planned out so that all students could be successful with their partner. Okay, so one of the visible learning components or influences, I should say, that we've spent a lot of time at Heritage talking about our last couple of years has to do with feedback. So feedback has a strong influence and if done deliberately and consistently can double the rate of growth or for student achievement in one year. So the effect size is 0 0.75 or 75th hundredths for the math <laughs> folks. Um, and so it has a very strong effect size if done properly. And so there are different types of feedback that John Hattie and his gurus have talked about. And um, the instructional feedback is kind of what I wanted to focus on for here because it's the most academic based. So there are three different levels to the instructional feedback and a lot of the feedback that you're giving is at level two and three, the higher levels. So level two being the process level and level three giving feedback to help the students self-regulate their own learning, which is ultimately the highest goal. So could you start with, in what ways are instructional feedback given to students within your math block? Uh, so on a daily basis, uh, students are working with partners. Um, in this specific lesson, they were working, uh, as Charlotte said, in two of the groups with partners and in one independently. So in those partner centers, uh, students were able to give feedback to each other, but then we were also able to give feedback to them. Um, so whether that's in the form of questioning, uh, we're giving them models and then expecting them to follow the models that we give, uh, we may uh, scaffold the task that they're doing. Um, and if we're checking with specific students and we see that they're struggling with something, our questioning is usually very deliberate or vocabulary based where we're taking the steps and giving them the feedback so that they're reaching that end goal and it's not just being uh, given to them. To them. Right. Um, on a more uh, specific like tech feedback mm -hmm. um, way we are, uh, every center that we had students working on, they had some form of immediate feedback. So even on uh, our task card center, which is pretty low tech, um, students have the availability to input their answer into a class kick fill in the blank box. And they're provided with the feedback that they've at least arrived at a correct answer. And then when they have either us nearby or their shoulder partner, they might be able to discuss more of their process. Um, we're finding that the more we use these types of um, and tech feedback, students are feeling more confident and they're more willing to kind of speak up and share sure. what they were able to do um, instead of being like, well, I don't know if I'm right, so I don't know if I want to share what I said, you know, what I did. So um, that's definitely been helpful. Hi, I'm Jessica Pickett, the general education teacher in the classroom. And I'm Charlotte Finichello. I'm the special education teacher in the classroom. And we would like to welcome you to our sixth grade co-taught math classroom. We hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> so here's how this works today, okay? Orange and purple, when I say go, you guys are gonna pair up cross color. We ended up having six groups and the groups ranged uh, from uh, low to low average to average. And then we had high average and high. Uh, and so we would pair the lower students up with an average group of students uh, and then average with high so that you didn't have your lowest with your highest 
uh, working together so that students were able to still challenge each other and have those uh, higher order thinking and higher questioning happening. So we have three centers today. Okay, center one is at our two tables here. It is our class kit unit six mini quiz two review uh, practice quiz. Okay, so you're going to be working with your partner at a whisper one. The class kick assignment is called Unit 6 Mini Quiz 2 Review Practice Quiz. Okay, so you're going to have questions to work through that are just like your quiz tomorrow. So you're working together with your partner, showing your work for each question, and then you'll be able to answer, uh, enter in your answers to get some feedback on most of the questions. Okay, any work that you do on your table or on your whiteboards should be what? Where does it need to go? It needs to be photographed, right, and then put into the slide into the class kit. Good. Um, our, I'm going to talk about this one next. This center over here, you'll notice you have um, baggies of task cards in your caddy. You and your shoulder partner will take one bag and you will work through those problems in numerical order. Yep. Perfect. Okay. All right, guys, so you are opening up to your practice quiz, okay? As you are working, if you need help with anything, you're more than welcome to ask me or Ms. Winichello for help, and then you have each other to ask for help as well, okay? So we want you working through each question as a team, okay? Two brains is better than one right now, and then tomorrow on your quiz, you'll be more prepared to work independently by yourself, okay? All right, get started. I'm here if you need me, okay? Okay, so when we see that word, we are thinking what again? Addition. Okay. So, what are the two values of the two add ends we call them? That you are adding together to divide. How did you know to start with why you needed this? Okay, so let's see on a sheet show. Okay, where you're at. Okay, so because it's at 8 less than y, you're, you're finding an amount that is less than y. Let's do this, Sienna. Write out your original expression. Let's start there. Put up here so you have enough room. And I'm going to join you. Okay, so while you guys write, I'm going to write too. Okay, so we have 8 times 7y plus 3. Okay, what property are we going to use to simplify this? The distributive property, right? Sienna, show me with your marker there how you would model the distributive property. Good, okay. So we're going to do 8 times, you said 8 times 7, but what's with 7? Y. Y, right, so we have 7Y. Okay, so let's write that first step. 8 times 7Y. Okay, what do we have to remember to include and bring down with us? The addition sign, right? 